good morning good morning everybody we've got old blue running we're ready to go and we're waiting for the sun we've got an oversized behind us we're permitted we're in North Bay Ontario pick this up in uh, around the Hamilton Ontario area and it's going to Brandon Manitoba so we're going through Northern Ontario we're going to be taking Highway 11 through Capus Casing around Today I'm hoping to make it to Long Lac, uh, Thunder Bay, somewhere in there, Long Lac or Thunder Bay. Permits state that I can only drive during daylight hours. I can only get on the road a half hour before sunrise, and I have to be off the road a half hour after sunset, no later. So today, when is sunrise in North Bay, Ontario? In North Bay today, sunrise is at 7.46 a.m. 7.46, so that means at 7.16, I can hit the road. It is now, 640 I'm ready to go I wish the Sun would hurry up a little bit here well I may be ready to go but old blues not ready to go yet anyway I just started her up uh, letting it warm up should be ready by oh should be long ready by the time we can go it's 7 15 7 16 um, heating up some water here gonna make some coffee have some breakfast the truck and the load are all good. We're all ready to go other than having to warm up. It's going to be a good day. So if we make it to Long Lac, which is uh, I think it's about 850 kilometers away or 500 and some miles, it's about nine hours of just steady driving. So let's see. Uh, when is sunset today in Long Lac, Ontario? In Long Lac today, sunset is at 5.34 p.m. 5.34 p.m., kind of early. It always surprises me how fast the sun goes now. So by 5 p.m., I have, no, by 6 p.m., sorry. By 6 p.m., I have to be off the road. So if I'm starting here at 7.15, that gives me what, 10 and three quarter hours? So if you're wondering why I show you all that, that's how I trip plan every day, especially when I have a, a wide load behind me and I'm required to be on or off the road at specific times or by specific times. I need to know how far I can make it. I need to have a, a trip plan of where I'm gonna park, a backup plan if I don't get that far, and a plan for if I exceed my expectations and I can park further down the road. So the minimum distance I want to travel today is Long Lac, but it looks like I'll be able to get past there with the daylight hours. I might make it to Nipigon, Ontario. So Long Lac or Nipigon, Ontario, somewhere in there is where we're going to stop tonight. And if we do really good, somehow, we'll make it to that Shania uh, Thunder Bay Flying J. I don't think we're going to make it that far. I don't think we're going to make it that far. But hey, if, if everything just goes perfect, maybe. Maybe if it's just one of those days where you know you see unicorns flying past and pigs flying everywhere and everything just goes perfect, we might make it that far. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say right now the minimum distance we're gonna make today is Long Lac, Ontario. And uh, we're shooting for Nipigon. Okay. Time is here. 
The sun is about to show its beautiful face over the horizon. According to the official time of sunrise in North Bay, Ontario today, I am allowed to get moving. So without further ado, let's go. Got my coffee. I've had my breakfast. Let's get the truck rolling. Let's just double check that my trailer's gonna come with me like I do every day. There we go. It is attached. Brakes work. And of course, brakes release. Wonderful. It's gonna be a good day. Had a good sleep. Really good sleep. I'm glad that all these trucks that were parked here moved. There's like six trucks parked across here at night. I woke up in the middle of the night to, I, I don't know why, I just woke up and I looked out the window, checked what time it was, and I was all blocked in. Not blocked, I could have still gotten out, it just would have been a little tight. They left enough room for me, but I like, why did y'all park there? And I woke up, they were all gone. <laughs> okay, well, no big deal then. At 100 meters, turn right on Pinewood Park Drive. Hold on there, bud. Hold on, wide load coming through. Hold on, hold on. There you go, thank you. I thought he was gonna push his way in anyway. Thank you. I'm feeling nice this morning. I'm gonna wait for you. I'm feeling nice. I will accept thank yous in Tim cards. I just about turned in front of you because you turned your signal on too soon. All right. Here we go. Here we go. We are rolling, we are rocking. What are these guys doing parked right in front of Timmy's? They're not allowed to park there. Look at me in the morning just criticizing. <laughs> Let's start the day off better than this. All right, they do, you, you do you over there, guys. I'm gonna do me over here. I'm just gonna meander my way down towards, uh, towards home. Gotta get to Long Lack. I just have one of those feelings today, you know? It's gonna be a good day. And you know what? If today disagrees with me, well, I disagree with it. It's gonna be a good day. We're gonna make it a good day. Wanna know why? I'm breathing. I had a good breakfast, I have some coffee. My heart's beating. Got a good wife at home, got a baby on the way. Got a good family on both sides. Uh, nothing to complain about really, other than drivers on the highway. But we'll try to keep that to a minimum. We'll do our best. It's hard, because they keep getting in my way. <laughs> or maybe I'm in their way. I don't know, I'm probably in their way more than they're in my way. So the load I have on my trailer, uh, it's, it's for a bridge, it's part of a bridge structure. Three pieces of the bridge. On 
there's three of us uh, bringing this load over to Brandon. My part of it weighs about 46,000 pounds or 45,000 pounds. I think it was 46 on the paperwork. Either way, I'm not even close to being overweight, so I don't gotta worry about that, but I am over width. Hence the fancy expensive permit. And all these rules about when I can drive. Let's go. Come on, old blue, another day. Let's do it. of it. Myself and I came to a conclusion together after a brief, uh, brief meeting, and looked at the time. We're making a really good time today. We can make it to Nipigon. We can do it. So I'm going to fuel there instead. That way I can go to bed with full tanks of fuel. It's going to be really cold tonight, and I don't like to park in the extreme cold without full tanks of fuel. So that's the decision we came to, me, myself, and I. But we're gonna have to hammer down. So no stopping in cap today. I'm just gonna stop up ahead here at a little pullout. I'm gonna refill my washer fluid, make sure it's topped off, and then just book it.
away from me. I'm chasing it. We're gonna make it. In about 15, 20 minutes to spare. Again, our trip planning was executed right down to the T. The sun set at 5.45 here in Nipigon. I was allowed to be on the road until 6.15 and I rolled in here at 6.13. <laughs> I had to wait in line for fuel, but I was off the road. So I waited in line for fuel and once I fueled up, finished that up, came around, backed it right on in here, nice big old spot for an oversized load. We're set. We're here until the sun comes up, or until half an hour before the sun comes up in the morning. I have 794 kilometers, or 500 and 500 miles, left to do tomorrow. That'll be no problem to get that done. I just have to get to the Manitoba border. Our Ontario permits only allow me to drive uh, during the daylight hours. In Manitoba, I can drive at night. So as long as we get to the Manitoba border before sunset, that's fine. The sun is coming up, let's see. When is sunrise here tomorrow? I gotta tell it where I am. Come on, you know where I am, Google. I know you're creeping on me. I know you stalk me. When is sunrise in Nipigon tomorrow? In Nipigon tomorrow, the sun will rise at 8.28 a.m. 8.28, that's it, eh? Wow, okay. Well, 8.28. Didn't it rise like way earlier in North Bay this morning? So I was on the road at 7.15, that means it would rise at 7.45. Why does it rise 45 minutes later here? Oh, I know why. I know why, because we're so close to the, the date, the timeline, uh, the time zone line. Another couple hours down the road, we jump into central time. In North Bay, we were further east and we were more in the center of central time zone. 
So there's 45 minutes from when the sun rises in North Bay to when it rises here in Nipigon, even though it's in the same Eastern time zone. I've never, never thought of that before. <laughs> I don't follow very many oversized loads, I guess. Okay, so the sun's coming up at 8.30 or 8.28. I can get going at 8 a.m. And it's gonna be cold tonight. It is gonna be cold. Going down to minus 27 Celsius. What is minus 27 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 27 degrees Celsius is equivalent to minus 16.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, there you go. It's not the coldest, but uh, it's definitely on the cold side of things. It's uh, not warm is how I would describe it. Tonight will not be warm but it will be warm in my truck. It will be uh, an, idling, an idling night. I don't like those nights, but below minus 25, well, above minus 30, we might just do half the night. My tanks are full of fuel, so I'm not too worried about gelling up. But at the same time, I have to be cautious. I have to keep that fuel moving. Because what happens is when I have my engine idling, not only does it keep me warm inside, keep my engine warm, uh, I have other heaters to do that for me. I don't need the engine to do that. But what that does is it circulates the fuel. It takes fuel from the fuel tanks through the fuel filters into the engine, but it doesn't use it all. Some of it gets returned back to the fuel tanks. And that fuel that goes back to the fuel tanks is very warm. So as the fuel keeps circulating through the engine back to the fuel tanks, it warms up my fuel tanks. Like they're actually warm to the touch. The snow will melt off a bit if there's any snow on it. So it keeps my fuel warm and prevents it from gelling up. If I shut my truck off, now that fuel is just sitting sitting still. And then the cold starts creeping in and the, the diesel fuel starts to crystallize. And then when I start it up in the morning, all of those crystals that have formed in the fuel lines, specifically between the, the fuel tanks and the, and the fuel filter, and even sometimes on like a surface level on top of the fuel inside the tank, or sometimes there's condensation inside the tank that falls down onto the fuel, those crystals get sucked through the fuel lines into the fuel filter and those those things obviously can't get through the filter so they plug up the filter and that's what it means when your fuel gels it, it turns into like a crystal gel like substance just a little bit just enough to gum up your fuel filters and then uh, and then you can't get fuel to your engine for me I carry extra fuel filters with me so even if that did happen I have a, a, a filter wrench I can switch the filter myself right here I got some 911, which is uh, like an emergency. You pour it in there, it melts the ice crystals. But you take the you take the fuel filter off that's all full of the ice crystals, you throw it out, you put a new one on, and then the rest of the fuel should be able to move through there freely, and then you can get the fuel warmed up as the engine idles, right? That's the idea of it. That's really not something you want to do when it's minus 35 outside. You don't want to be out there changing fuel filters, but that's how you fix that problem if, if it does happen to you. So. In the summertime, if you're going to be driving a truck, whether it be yours or a company truck, always make sure you know what fuel filters it uses and get extra fuel filters, okay? Make sure you always have extra fuel filters and then get a little wrench. It's like a little O that goes over it that you can loosen it easily, a nice little tool to unscrew that. And then, best thing to do is in summertime when it's warm outside or if you have a shop uh, like I do, practice practice changing those filters when it's comfortable outside so that when it's cold outside and it's minus 35 and your filters gel up you know what to do because you've practiced it so you open the hood you can get under there and quickly change those fuel filters as fast as possible and you don't have to mess around in minus 35 or minus 50 you know trying to figure out how to change a fuel filter I'm speaking to myself as well too I know how to do it but I haven't practiced so I'm also speaking to myself this is something I need to do in my shop when I have some free time I just need to practice changing those filters. I mean, when it's minus 50 outside and you gotta change those filters, you wanna be like a NASCAR pit crew. You wanna know where your equipment is, you wanna know where your tools are, you wanna know exactly what you're doing so that when you throw that hood open, it's a like, boop, 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 done. And get back on the road and get back in the truck and warm up. Speaking to myself here again, this also goes for changing fan belts or alternator belts. Always have a spare belt with you in your truck, even if it's a company truck, get your company to buy you an extra belt and buy you extra filters so you can have them in the truck. Go request them from your shop. If they ask why, well, because you should always have those in your truck just in case. So if a belt goes, you don't have to call a service guy and pay him $500 to come out and change a belt for you. You should know how to change those belts yourself. Again, in warm weather or in a warm shop, practice. 
practice changing the alternator belt, practice changing the fan belt, take all the belts off, put them all back on. You'll need a tensioner rod or a, or a tool to uh, release, uh, release the tension on the belts. You can go on YouTube and find a whole bunch of videos teaching you how to do this. I don't do how-tos, I'm not really a trainer. I just give you pointers like this every now and then, but I'm not a trainer, I'm an entertainer here on YouTube. So I try to entertain you while at the same time trying to give you some helpful tips. But uh, there are other creators online that uh, I would send you to that would teach you exactly how to change a fan belt, exactly how to change a fuel filter. You can easily just type it in the search bar and it'll be there for you. But again, when it's warm outside, practice these things. Change your fan belt, change it back, take it off, put it back on. Your alternator belt, take it off, put it back on. Just so that you know what you're doing, so that if, if it all of a sudden breaks on you on the side of the road, you know that you have an extra belt and you know what to do with it and you know how to how to change it. It's, it's always good to know that. Those two basic things, know how to change your belts and know how to change your fuel filters. And if you wanna go a step further, you know, learn how to change an alternator. That one's not hard at all. All you need to do is disconnect the battery unscrew some bolts, take the old one off, well, take the belt off first, take the old alternator off, put the new one on, screw it back in, connect the wires, reconnect the batteries, connect the belt again, and you're good to go, right? Little things like this, we should be able to do ourselves on the side of the road. You shouldn't have to pay a service guy $500 to do it. Now, if you're driving a company truck, maybe you don't care. Fair enough, fair enough. But the fuel filters, that's an important one because it doesn't matter how much you pay a service guy in the wintertime to come change your fuel filters for you. If your truck's not running and it's minus 50 outside, every minute counts. It's just faster if you do it, but you don't want to freeze. That's like a life or death situation. You should know how to change your fuel filters, regardless. Even if the company pays for it later or something, just learn how to get that done so you can get your truck running so that you don't freeze to death waiting for a service guy. And that's my advice. You can take it or leave it. I'm getting hot sitting here in this jacket. I've got a jacket on, a sweater on. I still have it on from when I was fueling. I saw this spot here. <laughs> I didn't even take my jacket off. I jumped in the truck when I was done fueling and I'm just got over here as quickly as I could so that I got this spot and no one else would take it. It's mine. It's a good one because I can drive straight out here. Look at this. Look at this. Huh? Did, I, did you see it before? You see? There's the driveway right there. I can just whoop, go straight there. This guy beside me, if he leaves, he can back straight out there and then go. Uh, people can easily back in beside me on both sides and I don't have to worry about them hitting me. It's a nice, it's a very nice spot. It's, it's mine. Just so you know, it's mine. It has my name on it. It's under the snow. It's there, trust me. So when I show up in Nipigon, don't let me catch you in my spot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pack up here and uh, have, I have some time to kill now. So thanks for joining me today, everybody. It was just a day of straight driving. Literally, like, I didn't stop for anything except for bathroom breaks, and I checked my load twice. Just, whew. I checked my load in the morning. I drove a couple hours down the road, about a third of my day. Stopped, checked my load again. It's the second day I've had this load already, so I've already, uh, I already know it's good, but I like to check it anyway, check my tires. Went to the bathroom, drove down the road for a while, did it again, and then, straight here we made really good time today and you know if i wouldn't have hustled so much i wouldn't have made it here so i'm glad i did so now i got full tanks of fuel i got a good parking spot i got a whole bunch of time just to hang out here now i wish i had diesel with me if you're wondering why diesel's not with me ah, open my window uh ghost window touched it with my elbow if you're wondering why diesel's not with me anymore i really wish he was the uh, reason number one is he's getting old uh, he is semi-retired. He's uh, he really enjoys being at home with the family. I really wish he would be uh, he would be here with me, but he's been having some issues on the road. Uh, he's having panic attacks. I don't know why. He grew up on the road. This is all he knows. But I think this truck's a little louder. Uh, it's pretty small in here. Very small for me and him to be in here is pretty cramped. We make it work, but uh, for some reason when we hit gravel roads which we do in summertime sometimes, or anything like the rumble strips on the center line, like, you know, sometimes you like hit that, or on the shoulder, you hit those little rumble strips, or, or, or whatever, anything like that, or some, some rough road, or even, yeah, like even bumpy roads, he starts panicking and he starts like, he starts shaking, like, like he's scared. And he comes and sits between the seats here and he can't calm himself down. And it freaks me out. Yeah really does I don't know if he's uh, oh my neighbor's leaving okay that means I'm gonna move over 
I'm gonna move right over and I'll be on the side. Nice, even better. I don't know why he's having those panic attacks, but uh, it worries me. So he's been taking it really easy and just going on short trips with me, but mostly staying at home. Um, it seems like uh, maybe the trucking life is just not as much for him anymore. Which, yeah, it's sad, but it's good to know that he's really happy at home with his with his fur brothers and with Britt. He's uh, he's doing well. Ha ha ha! Now I'm on the side. This is my spot. I was just joking about that spot. That spot's not my spot. This spot's my spot. This one's got my name under the snow. If you look there, uh, once all the snow is cleared away, I promise it's it's there. It's right in the back. It's in the it's in the corner, right here. The other guy was in my spot, but uh, you could say the spot next to me is my spot too. But uh, that's my backup spot. So if someone dares to park in my spot, I have my backup spot right beside. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, take care, everybody. Smash that like button like you've never smashed a like button before. Don't do that for me. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on all notifications so that you get notified when I release a new video. And I'll see you tomorrow. Got uh, 500 miles to go tomorrow. I'll see you when the sun comes up.